that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment, hope for all I do. the center of my joy. Oh, Jesus, you're the center to be praised. We're getting ready to carry out the ordinance of baptism. And certainly we take wonderful delight that we have three persons that we will be baptizing on this morning. Let's give God praise for that. Let me try that one more time. We got three people being baptized into the family of God. Let's give God praise for that. Amen, amen, amen. As we posture ourselves to carry out the ordinance of baptism, uh, we're asking that um, we would take our minds heavenward and focus on this wonderful opportunity to uh, birth persons into the family of God. And so at this particular time, let's bow our heads in prayer. God, we thank you for this wonderful privilege to baptize these candidates in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. We pray right now, God, that you will meet us in this moment, consecrate them for this hour, and empower them to live a life for you. It is in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, we pray, and in his name we claim it done. Let everyone that truly believes say, Amen.
We have before us Sister Joanne Greg Lyons. Let the church say amen. Sister Joanne, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And do you want to be baptized, or should I say reaffirm your faith and be a part of the St. Paul Baptist Church? I'm going to ask that family and friends of Sister Joanne, would you please stand if you're in the house? Family and friends of Joanne. Amen. I have the wonderful privilege in a few days I'm going to be marrying she and her fiance and they're both for being baptized on today to become a part of the St. Paul Church. Ms. Joanne, based upon your confession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this morning we baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We have before us Brother Larry Scott, who is the fiance of Sister Joanne. Amen. Brother Larry, have you confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And do you want to reaffirm that faith by being baptized and becoming a part of the St. Paul Baptist Church? We have before us Brother Jerome Greer. Let the church say amen. amen. Brother Jerome, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. And do you want to be baptized and become a part of the St. Paul Baptist Church? Amen. I'm going to ask that the family and friends of Brother Jerome Greer, if you're in the house, would you please stand? never lost nobody, but I almost took, I almost baptized Brother Ron Dean again. I don't know if the Lord telling me he need to go back under. I just made him a deacon. That's kind of scary, ain't it? But I kept the main one safe, and that was Jerome, amen? Boy, I tell you, after 33 years of pastoring, you never see it all. All right, come on, let's give the Lord praise. I know 
I find levity or a reason to laugh in anything. And I think I know what happened. Deacon Ron Dean got on those Jesus sandals. He needs something better. <laughs> got on those Jesus sandals, man. All right. What time is it? All right. Kelly, go ahead and open us up in worship. Come on, let's give the Lord praise as we prepare to worship Hallelujah. our God this morning. Come on, let's bless God for worship time, for new additions to the body of Christ. Come on, there's reason to rejoice this morning. For all of those who choose death, we got three who choose life, and I think we got some more life choosers in the house this morning. Are you glad that you done made it to January 15, 2023? It's almost Martin Luther King Day. We've had freedom fighters for centuries. There are plenty of reasons to worship the Lord this morning. So are you ready in the house to worship the Lord this morning? Are you ready online to worship this morning? We serve an awesome God, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And the truth of the Lord is mighty. The truth of the Lord is strong. The truth of the Lord is enough to keep us going. So if you believe God and God's truth, come on and tell God, thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord, that I'm surviving. Thank you, Lord, that I made it through sickness. Thank you, Lord, my family is still here. Thank you, Lord, I know you're still working on it. Even if I don't have my answer yet, God, you're still working on it, and I am grateful. If there's a grateful person online or in the house, just tell God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Get me started now. Holy, 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 Lord God, almighty God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Come on, let's worship the Lord this morning.
Amen. What an awesome, awesome God that we serve this morning. Our scripture this morning is coming from the book of Isaiah, chapter 49. You can turn in your paper Bible or pull it up on your device on the screen. We're going to be reading Isaiah, chapter 49, and we're going to start with verse 1. We're going to read verse 1 through 7. I'm going to read from the New Revised Standard Version. You can follow along in whatever version that you have handy. And the word of the Lord reads as follows. Listen to me, O coastland. Pay attention, you people from afar. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow in his quiver. He hid me away, and he said to me, you are my servant Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity, yet surely my cause is with the Lord and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him, for I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. Say that again. And my God has become my strength. One more time. And my God has become my strength. He says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to be deeply, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. The word of God is blessed for the people of God, and thanks be to God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. And wherever you are this morning, whether it's online, in your car, in the house, let's gather our thoughts in to focus on Jesus. Those things that are on your heart, we lay them at the altar this morning. Let us pray. Our Father and our strong God, oh, how we bless your name this morning. You are the God of nations. You gather us together unto yourself. And this morning, as we enter into holy worship, God, we say thank you. Thank you for one more chance to bless your name. Thank you for one more chance to do things right. Thank you for another opportunity to get our flesh under subjection. Thank you for a reminder that you're still on our side, that you promised us that when we go through the fire, you be there. When we were in the waters, you'd be there, Lord God. You promised us that you would never leave us nor forsake us. And so in eternal companionship, God, we gather together today just to honor your name, just to bless you, just to thank you, just to appreciate you. And before we ask for anything, God, we want to thank you for everything, God. Thank you for your son. We celebrated his birthday a month ago. Thank you, God, that you sent your son to die for us, God. You didn't have to do it. Oh, God, and so many parents couldn't imagine sending their only son to die, but you did it. And we bless your name, God. Thank you for forgiving our sins, God. We confess them all right now, knowing that you're faithful and you are just to forgive us our sins over and over and over and over again and to purify us from all unrighteousness. Now, God, we say have your way in this place and let it start 
in my heart, in your heart, in every heart gathered in this building and across the internet, God. We're so excited to serve a God that can move not just from heart to heart and breast to breast, but over the airwaves and the internet, you can connect your children so that no matter where someone is standing in the earth realm, they are never alone, God. Thank you that we are never alone, God. Thank you that your mercies don't fail. They're new every morning, God. Thank you that your grace is sustaining us, God. Thank you that your forgiveness is covering even the things we did last night, God. Thank you that you haven't struck us down even though the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Thank you that you've seen everything we've done and you've heard everything we've spoken, yet you choose to love us. You collect our tears and comfort us. You are with those who are grieving and who mourn. You are still touching those in the hospitals who are ill and you're still raising up those who were sick and are now better. You're a soul delivering, sin forgiving, loving God and we bless you this morning. Have your way. We praise you in a new year. We bring you everything we've been holding back, God. Nobody else knows, but you know. And we offer it to you right now. It is so. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, come on, let's praise the God who loves us and forgives us and covers us. Are you ready to praise him? Are you ready to praise him? Well, come on, let's do it then.
I believe we could do a whole lot better than that for this is the day the Lord has made and we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. I really wish I had some folks in the house that did not really mind giving God some praise this morning. Oh, we could do a whole lot better than that. The Bible says that everything that hath breath, praise ye the Lord. Anybody know you got some breath this morning? Well, if you got breath, you ought to let it out. And you ought to let it out in a praise. Hallelujah. 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 God is great and greatly to be praised from the rising of the sun till the going down of the same. And we thank the Lord for the wonderful opportunity to worship our God one more time. Amen. It is my wonderful privilege, it's my wonderful privilege to introduce to our church family uh, three new persons who have uh, been baptized this morning, and I'm going to ask that uh, they will come forward. Joanne Lyons, Larry Scott, and Jerome Greer III. I'm going to ask that they all will come at this time so that we can present to them Bibles and baptismal certificates. Kelly going to ask, are they dry yet? <laughs> come on, let's give God praise as they come. Amen. I'm going to have you. Let me see. You come over here. I, I have the wonderful privilege um, of presenting particularly to all of these candidates their baptismal certificates and Bibles. So you have a certificate that affirms you've been baptized on this day. Put it somewhere prominent um, as far as your house is concerned to remind you of a second birthday. Um, and we also have a Bible that is appropriate for your age that we want you to read as a gift from our church to you. And so we want to celebrate that with you. It is also a joy. Joanne and Larry are going to be getting married on next weekend in Cancun. So they wanted to affirm, they wanted to affirm their faith as far as their walk with God is concerned. And we thank God for that. So at this time... Larry, this is your Bible and certificate. Okay. Sister Joanne, this is your Bible and certificate. And Brother Jerome, this is your Bible and certificate. God bless you all. Thank you all so much. You may return to your seat. We want you to get connected, get involved as far as the church is concerned. There are various things that you can do to utilize what God has laid in your heart as far as your gifts are concerned. And we look forward to uh, continue to be, do life with you all. You may return to your seat. St. Paul, can we celebrate them? And let's give God praise for them. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. It is a joy, and, and I think we need to understand what a joy it is. Whenever we baptize anyone, that's real church growth. Uh, it's not just transferring from one place to another, but that's real church growth, being baptized into the family of God. Amen? Amen. I am also told that we have uh, in our midst, um, we have, of course, an athletic league, a basketball league that is housed here at St. Paul. And I'm told that the basketball players that uh, play in that league, they're in the house 
And I'm going to ask if they will all stand at this time. And everyone that is working with our basketball league, if you would stand, let's give God praise for them. Oh, I think we could do a whole lot better than that. This is one of, of course, our, our ministries as far as the church is concerned, and we thank God for you all joining us. Now, let me ask a question. Do y'all want to stay in here or y'all want to go to youth church? Because if you want to go to youth church, Minister Joshua Jordan will be ready to share with you all, and I'm going to ask if you want to go to youth church. Can I get someone to take them to youth church if they want to go? Meet, meet, hold up your hand. All right. Meet the person that's, that's waving her hand in the back with the white gloves on, and they're going to take you to youth church. So we want you all to go to youth church. We want to give you a major shout out, and we want you all to go to youth church. Amen. Come on, St. Paul. Let's give God praise for them. Thank you all for taking time out. Amen. To be in our presence. Amen. Amen. And also, um, before uh, I move forward with any other observations, of course, I think this is the month that the majority of all of our black Greek letter organizations were founded. <laughs> so I just want to give a major shout out to the Kappas, the Sigmas, the Deltas, the AKA, and the Zetas. If you're all a part of any of those organizations, why don't you stand up? I want to give you a major shout out right now. Amen, amen, amen. George, don't come messing with me after church now. All right. Amen. And, of course, today is Founders Day for the AKAs, and uh, we celebrate them. And, of course, also today is the late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King's earthly birthday, and he would have been 94 on today. Amen. He would have been 94 on today, and so our... Uh, UMBA, the United Missionary Baptist Association, will be having uh, a service this evening at the uh, Park Ministries Church on Betis Ford Road, where Bishop Claude Alexander is the pastor, and that's going to be at 6 o'clock. Uh, the guest preacher will be the Reverend Dr. Kathy C. Jones, the senior pastor at the Park Institutional CME Church. And so we invite you to either go in person at 6 o'clock or to join online on Facebook or our YouTube platforms. This is also an opportunity for us to raise funds for the scholarship for that uh, UMBA gives as far as students getting ready to go to college. Uh, the office will be closed tomorrow. We will open back up at 9 on Tuesday. Also, Black History Month is coming up. And uh, as Black History Month is uh, approaching us, the first Sunday, wear your Sunday's best. That's Sunday's best. And so we want you to come in your Sunday's best. Second Sunday is HBCU Sunday. So wear your favorite HBCU attire. Uh, represent your favorite historically black college or university. The third Sunday is Black Community Organization Divine Nine Sunday. So represent the various organizations um, that aid and give lift as far as our community is concerned. And then what we call around here, Wakanda Sunday is our African Attire Sunday on the fourth Sunday. And the preacher for that day is a good friend of mine. He's no stranger to St. Paul, the Reverend Dr. Stephen Blunt, uh, who is the pastor of the First Baptist Church Suffolk um, in Suffolk, Virginia. And so he's going to join us on that Sunday, and that's going to be African Attire. Check out our website to see how we'll be flowing as far as the month of uh, February is concerned. Also, first Saturday in February at 9.30, we're starting our new CEO class. I believe we got over 35 people that are supposed to go through CEO. Amen. Is this mic on? Let me, is this mic on? Let me try that again. I believe we got over 35 folks that's supposed to be going through CEO. I think we just brought in over 25 in the last class. We got about 35 supposed to be going through this class. And so that's going to be Saturday, 930. Um, uh, and we'll be starting that class on that Saturday. Also on that weekend is Love Notes 2023, uh, the retreat for that weekend. The theme, The Closer I Get to You, there are going to be tickets 
$75 per couple for the sneaker ball on that Saturday night. But on that Friday night, they're going to have a virtual comedy show uh, featuring comedian La Laron Clay or LC Funny. And then on Saturday the 5th, uh, we, uh, the 4th rather, we will have other couples uh, that will have breakfast and a half a day of dynamic sessions. And the facilitators are Judge Shante Burke Hayer and Jeffrey Hayer and the marriage gurus, Dr. Amy Steele and Pastor Michael Steele. Breakfast will be served at 8, workshop start right after. This will be a hybrid experience. And then that Saturday night, we will have the sneaker ball um, as far as love notes are con is concerned. And that's going to be in the ray of hope. Dress in your finest and get your cleanest sneakers and um, come and share. That's going to be a wonderful weekend. And I want to applaud our marriage ministry for uh, pulling together such a great job. So let's give God praise for all that's coming down the pipe. Amen, 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 amen. Um, we're preparing at this time to um, do a litany, and this is a stewardship litany. It's a stewardship litany uh, for, uh, with a particular focus on those who practice the discipline of giving tithes and, or paying tithes and giving offering. Uh, but it's for all persons that feel led to contribute something, and we want to help you to get to the baseline tithes and offerings, that's the baseline as far as biblical giving is concerned. And so as we prepare to do that, I'm going to ask, and I haven't done this in the past, but I'm going to ask uh, you to do a couple of things. First of all, all of those who are committed, uh, who are tithing and giving offerings or getting ready to make a commitment to give tithes and offerings, and tithe is 10%, at least 10%, of your income. Some folks ask, well, Pastor, uh, should I pay on my uh, net or on my gross? My response is it just depends on what type of blessing you want, whether you want a net blessing or a gross blessing. I pay on my gross. And so as your pastor, um, for my total package, uh, that's benefits and everything, uh, everything that I get, uh, I tithe on it. And so that has allowed for me to be probably one of the top three givers uh, in the church. Um, and I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that to be an example. Um, I'm not going to ask you to do anything that I'm not willing to do myself. Let me try that again. I don't ask you to do anything that I'm not willing to do myself. And so I think that leadership... Leadership requires that you be out in front. One of the stipulations that I have for all leaders here is that they at least be tithing and giving offerings. Uh, and so at this time, I'm going to ask, uh, if you can, make your way down front, but practice distancing. So uh, all tithers and uh, those who are making the commitment to tithe, if you will, come down front, but practice social distancing. So, you know, if you need to fill the aisle, give, leave some space. Because COVID is still real. Uh, but if you're tithing, uh, make your way down, down front. We're going to have on the screen a litany for all of those who are uh, engaging in this discipline. And it's a discipline. And let me just say before we get ready to do this, that just because you're tithing, uh, right living without right giving can cause you to miss your blessing. All right? you, you can't bribe God. 
by giving your tithe and then living a ratchet life. However, you can't live a righteous life and you're not giving right. So right living plus right giving causes you to flow in a way that is uh, uh, just absolutely astounding and God will bless you as far as that is concerned. And so as you come to get consecrated as a tither, we also want you to understand that right living is expected as far as this is concerned. Let me just share before we do this consecration. Last year here at St. Paul, coming out of pandemic, we raised a little over $2.9 million. Um, and certainly God is to be praised as far as that's concerned. Um, uh, God is to be praised, but for a church of our size and of our ilk, we should be doing anywhere between three and a half to four, four and a half million eyes closed. And once we start crossing that threshold, we're going to be able to do some even more amazing things as far as the kingdom is concerned. So it's my hope and prayer that for the rest of you all that are sitting out there, that you one day will join us in the discipline of giving tithes and offerings. I guarantee you will not go broke giving tithes. Amen. I ain't never seen anybody go broke giving tithes and offering. I've seen you go broke going to the boat or going to the casino or drinking or doing some other stuff or buying clothes you don't need with money you don't have trying to impress folks you don't like. But I ain't never seen anybody go broke giving tithes and offerings. Never, never, never. All right, so here's our litany. <clears throat> Today, we come before God and the ministry of the St. Paul Baptist Church to consecrate those who have made the bold step and audacious commitment to give at least 10% of their income back to God. It is God's desire that his people will honor him with the first fruit of their labor, those that are tithing. waiting for them to bring up the litany. All right. Can y'all read that? All right. Okay, let's read it together. We thank you, O oh God, for giving us breath for life, faith for the journey, and strength to work. Therefore, we are obligated, and we are obligating ourselves to make the commitment to follow your word by bringing the tithes and offerings to your storehouse that is the church. Tithing is not just an Old Testament principle, but it's a New Testament virtue. When Jesus came and ministered, he did not repeal the law of the tithe, but raised it to a higher level because of his grace. Tithers, we understand that tithing does not make us better disciples, but it places us in the proper place to do the will of God because we are truly given of ourselves when we give of our resources. It is a blessed privilege to give to God because God has first given to us. There is a blessing connected with tithing, tithers. Honor the Lord. Amen. Uh, tithers. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Tithing is not about the giving of money, but tithing is about where we put our faith. When we tithe, we are making God first priority in our life. When we tithe, we are showing God and others that we trust in God to take care of us because we are obedient to God's word and will. Tithing is the starting point of biblical giving, not the end. Tithers. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Therefore, we give because it is more blessed to give than to receive. We make this commitment to God because of the promise of his word that God loves the cheerful giver. We make the commitment to tithe because our faith and our past tells us that we can take God at his word. Tithers. God's word says in Luke 6:38, give and it shall be given to you. 
good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and run over, will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. All, bring all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Let us bow our heads. God, as we come and we consecrate and recommit ourselves to giving the tithe and the offering to you, bless us according to your word. Position us in such a way that people will see something dynamic in our lives and wonder how is it we are able to do what we do and as we tell them because we're trying to live right and we're trying to give right help us oh god to live a godly holy life as well as to give in such a way that the work of your kingdom will go forth it is in jesus name we pray and we say amen you may return to your seat let's give god praise for those who have made this commitment And as you make your way back to your seat, we're getting ready to posture ourselves for prayer. I kind of been playing phone tag with um, Sister Betty Oates, but we want to lift her in our prayers. Sister Betty Oates lost her son, Chris Peterson, last week uh, to cancer. And so we want to lift her up in prayer as they make arrangements uh, for his homegoing celebration. We also want to lift up uh, the family of Regina Anderson, who is the sister of Disciple Gail Board, and those services are pending as well. We want to lift up the family of Joe Alexander, the brother of Disciple Jeanette Bird, the family of Victoria Curitan, the family of Susie M. Johnson, the grandmother of Ashley Johnson, and the family of Fred Thomas, the son of Disciple Barbara Graham, we continue to lift up uh, Sister Janola Blakeney, Marilyn Frazier Blakeney, uh, Reverend Dr. Paul Drummond, and uh, Lady Thomasina Drummond, and Sister Lisa Duncan, and there are other names that are scrolling up and down our list. We also continue to lift up Deacon Ted Pearson in his recuperation from procedure several weeks ago. We flank him with our prayers. We lift up also the family of Sister Ruth Lockett, I mean, well, Sister Ruth Lockett, who is in ICU, um, we continue to flank her in our prayers, Yvonne Pettis, Anthony Farr, and their names will be others that are scrolling up and down our list that we pray you will in your private prayer time join. I'm going to ask that um, Reverend Kelly Baptist will take us to the throne of grace as far as prayer concerns. Uh, go ahead and be seated. Go ahead and be seated. Uh, as far as prayer concerns, and um, we will go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Let us pray. Our Father and our strong God, we thank you for every name that has been lifted. They are connected to this family, and we bring them up before you, God. We come to you on their behalf, asking you to do what only you can do, to comfort, to heal, to restore, and to bring peace. God, you are still the God of peace and the God who cares, and you promised us that even when we went through trials and tribulations that you would be with us, God. You warned us that we were going to have trials and tribulations, but fear not, for you have overcome the world. And not only that, God, but you have bestowed upon us the title of overcomers. So God, we just ask that you would touch these families, God. Not only that, but move into those families who are still grieving, God. We've seen so many who have passed from labor to reward over the last year and more, God, and we know that even though their memory lives in us, God, sometimes the journey of grief, oh God, will have waves, oh God, that crest and flow. So we ask that you would continue to minister to those families who are still suffering, still grieving, and God, not only that, but cause us to be the hands and arms of God, reaching out to remember someone that we know has been through some stuff, God. Sometimes we need to remember that we're a testimony, that 
We have been through and you will make it through too. God, we lift up this nation. So much chaos has been going on, God. It seems like there's something new in the news every day. It's like a tennis match of chaos going back and forth. But God, we pray that your order would flow through this country from the highest annals of government to the lowest places in the nation. God, we need for the government to be on your shoulders so you can show us how you need things to be done so that the people are help so that we can truly say thy kingdom come and thy will be done even in this place called the USA and beyond. God we pray for those who are still reaching out Lord God to those who are in need. It was cold this week God and there are some who are still out in the cold Lord God not just physically but spiritually. So God we lift them up before you right now God saying have your way to send the resources, send your people to bring those out of the cold and out of the darkness and into your marvelous light. God, we thank you because we know that every prayer that we lift is heard. Lord God, we know that those things that are still on our hearts, you're still dealing with them and we trust you. God, we thank you that even though there are those still dealing with illness, God, there are so many that you have healed, God. Healed from COVID, healed from cancer, healed from illnesses, big and small, God. And we rejoice for every small miracle and we know that we're preparing for bigger and better yet to come. You are the God who sees us, the God who saves us, the God who loves us. And our trust, our hope, our faith, and our love is in you. We believe you. We stand on your promises. And we say it is so. It's in Jesus' name that we all pray and we say together, amen, amen, and amen. Come on, let's give the Lord praise. If you believe that prayer is being answered, can you give God praise right now? We certainly thank the Lord. I am. This is uh, Lady Pierce's first Sunday of the new year being in church. We thank God for her presence. Amen. She had been dealing with COVID for the last couple of weeks. And um, uh, that's, you know, I knew it was real. But when you see it up close and personal, uh, it takes on a whole different dynamic. And so, uh, please, ma'am, please, sir, consider getting vaccinated. And if you're vaccinated, get boosted. Because ain't no telling where she would have been had she not been vaccinated and boosted. And so, um, glad she's able to be in the house. Amen. 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 Well, beloved, it is time to give. Amen. It's time to give. And of course, we just had consecration for tithe, tithes and off, uh, those that are giving uh, tithes and practicing that discipline. But for all of us, all of us can give something. And so, as we prepare to give, there are three ways you can give here at St. Paul Church. First is by either sending in your check or money order to the church at 1401 Allen, Charlotte, 28205, or dropping off check, cash, money order at the church. Uh, if you decide to do that, call the church office first at 704-334-5309 to make sure someone is here to receive that offering. The other way you can give is by going online and giving through our website through Church Life or ACS. You can also give through the app called Givelify. And if you don't have that app on your smart device, download that app, connect to your favorite credit card, and in three clicks, you can give. You may have a physical offering here in the church, and if so, at the appropriate time, we're going to have you to reach to the outer aisle. There ought to be a basket uh, underneath your seat, and we're going to ask that you would pass that basket down to the inner aisle. Amen? However you're giving, whether you're giving a physical or giving digitally, if you would, take your offering, place it in your right hand. If you're able, we want to give God what's right, not what's left, and let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we come to you right now, uh, and we give because you are first given to us. We don't take this for granted. And as we come, we're sowing into great ground here at the St. Paul Church. And so, Lord, in your own sovereign and imitable way, take these gifts of ours, multiply them in a god way. For those that are practicing the discipline of giving tithes and offerings, bless them according to your word. 
for those that may not be tired but giving something God bless and increase their faith and then God for those who feel like they don't have to do anything or give anything convict them and help them to realize they can't beat you giving no matter how hard they try and God take these gifts of ours and use them for your work, your witness, your word, and your work. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For those that have physical offering, if you would, look uh, on the outer edge and there ought to be a basket. Uh, pass that basket down and our account team will receive it.
morning? Do you have a reasonable portion of health and strength? We can sing hallelujah! says but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ so be steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord now let me see if I can connect the dots for you that if you know you are a winner that means you can keep your hand on the plow and not turn your back when everybody else feels like giving up let me try that one more time. Do I have anybody that know I am a victor and not a victim? I am a winner, not a whiner. If you know that God has given you victory, not in and of yourself, but through Jesus Christ our Lord, 
that ought to be enough for you to shout and to give our God the praise. Hallelujah. For those of you who have your Bibles, we want to call your attention to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. Really going to be talking about your spiritual gifts and the church today. These words are printed. In the New King James Version of Scripture, Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and Sathenius, our brother, to the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints with all who are in every place called on the name of Jesus our Lord, both theirs and ours, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank God, my God always, concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you by Christ Jesus, that you were enriched in everything by him in all utterance and all knowledge even as a testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. Verse 7, which is key, so that you come short in no gift, eagerly awaiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus. God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. My subject is not too exciting, but it excites me. I want to talk about the purpose of spiritual gifts for the new year. Um, the purpose of spiritual gifts for this new year. Kind of been on this new year thread and want to kind of continue this theme. The purpose of spiritual gifts for the new year. I might be dating myself a little bit, but um, one of my favorite movies of all time is The Lion King. I like The Lion King because of its depiction and description about life and living, death and dying, prescribing what happens when one runs from his or her purpose and destiny. The Lion King is sort of a semblance of biblical stories like the story of Joseph and Moses and even the Shakespearean tragedies of Hamlet and Macbeth. Uh, the Lion King, I like that story. It's a story about uh, Mufasa in the pride lands of Africa. Mufasa, the king of a pride of lions. Mufasa was married to Sarabi. They had a little lion cub by the name of Simba. Simba was the apple of his daddy's eye. And Simba was the heir apparent to become king of the pride lands. Mufasa also had an evil brother by the name of Scar, who was jealous of both Mufasa and Simba. Scar created a scenario whereby he kills Mufasa and then places the blame on Simba, causing Simba to go into exile and leave the Pride Land, thereby allowing Scar to rise to the position of king. And the Pride Land was ran by Scar and a bunch of hyenas. There was the priest known as Rafika. Rafika was a baboon. He was the spiritual leader of the Pride Land. And he went on a search to find the exile heir apparent, Simba. When Rafika finds Simba, he tells Simba that Mufasa is still alive. Rafika takes Simba to a pond. 
and tells him to look in the water. And Simba looks in the water and he sees a reflection. And he says, that's not my father. That's my reflection. Rafika takes his cane and he touches the water and says, no, look harder. And as the waters begin to ripple, ripple Simba's reflection changes to look just like Mufasa. And Rafika says, you see, he lives in you. What a statement for us as children of God who are filled by the power, the presence, and the person of the Holy Spirit. You and I right now are considered to be heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus when it comes to the realization of our purpose, destiny, and power. When we examine the brokenness of our lives, how messed up we are, and yet God pursues us because God wants to be in relationship with us, that, my brothers and sisters, can be mind-boggling. Every last one of us, from the choir stand through the back door to the parking lot, have been created in the image and likeness of God. However, sin has distorted that image and likeness until we don't look like what God originally intended for us to be. But God goes on a rescue and repair mission to do corrective spiritual surgery on our hearts, minds, and spirits to recalibrate us so that we can reclaim the identity that God has for us. It is an identity to give us power to deal with the oppressive conditions we face in life. It is an identity securing us in the knowledge that the world should never, ever define us. It is an identity showing us how we can do more together than we can ever do in isolation. It is an identity informing us that when you're doing well, I'm doing well. And when you are hurting, I am hurting. This identity is not rooted in gender or race or education, financial status, social background, or even the neighborhood we come from. This identity is connected to our relationship with Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, by which we are infused with the Holy Spirit to do incredible, transcend the limits of our lives, and push beyond the barriers that try to keep us back. However, being in Christ means you cannot be by yourself and try to live a Christian life. There is no such thing as a long ranger disciple thinking you can do this work by yourself. This is, beloved, why the church, with all her issues and faults, this is why the church exists. Now, too often, too many of us come to church or connect with church online as if it's one more thing we got to do for the week. We look at it as another chore to be scheduled on our planner. But when you're truly in tune with the Holy Ghost, you recognize church is not just one more thing to do. It's one more thing you be. It is the gathering of the community of believers who have been through some tough times. It is connecting with the saints who have overcome some interesting scenarios. It is the assembling of those who feel like they're barely making this saying, if it had not been for the Lord. On my side, there's no telling where I would be right now. The gathering of church folks can be messy because it's made up of messy folks who God has saved and is saving. In other words, we must admit that my relationship, your relationship, our relationship with God does not mean the mess is totally gone. God knows we got some messy situations because if folks knew what you really came from to be here today, they might turn their nose up at you. And others might shun you. And some might just have pity on you. But I've come to inform you of this divine fact 
that your mess, my mess, is not a surprise to God. And despite our mess, God is calling us to engage in a life of service to the kingdom. So in spite of our mess, God has placed something within us. And the best way this is expressed is within the context of the community known as the church. So people can be healed, breakthroughs can occur, the gospel can be preached, souls can be saved, and lives can be changed. I want to contend that as we celebrate today, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King's 94th earthly birthday, we must be ever, ever so careful not to divorce Dr. King from the church. That first and foremost, he was not a civil rights proponent. He was a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it is his relationship with Jesus Christ that informed his sociology that caused him to try to make a change in his anthropology so that ultimately the people will see Jesus in his theology and come to know who Jesus Christ is in the pardon of their sin. Regardless of what you say and do, please, ma'am, please, sir, remember that Martin Luther King was a black preacher down in Montgomery, Alabama, and then Atlanta, Georgia, preaching the unsearchable riches of the gospel of Jesus Christ before he ever was a social right activist. And if you're not careful, we can become so bogged down in his social activism until we fail to uh, realize that it was his Bible and his relationship with Jesus that informed everything he did outside the church. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. Here, Here it is. This is what Paul wants us to understand that as we navigate as far as life and living is concerned, Paul was called to do ministry in the morally corrupt, spiritually chaotic, and despicably conniving city known as Corinth. Corinth was like Las Vegas. Anything you want, you can find. God placed on Paul's ministerial itinerary to establish a church in the heart of a secular paganistic society. In their paganism, the Corinthians were worshiping the god and goddesses of the Greek pantheon like Zeus, Aphrodite, Athena, Poseidon, and Hades. These false gods and goddesses were figments of the Corinthians' imaginations. They did not have any power to make liberating and creative changes necessary for life and living. And if you read this letter from its beginning, you will see this church has some serious issues. They were dealing with internal strife, perverted relationships, power struggles over who the best preacher was. Don't get it wrong. The people at Corinth had a relationship with Jesus Christ. They were saved, but they weren't mature. They were behaving in carnal, worldly ways to the point that Paul could not even take them into the deeper things of God. In fact, Paul said, I got to give you milk because you can't handle the meat because you can't deal with the solid food of the word of God because y'all fussing too much and striving too much and you're too jealous of each other. And I've come to understand that God will not release spiritual blessings into your space until you deal with your own division and strife and jealousy when you know who you are in God you ain't got to be jealous of anybody else when you know who you are in God you have peace about yourself when everybody else want to fight fuss and cuss when you know who you are in God you don't let folks division have impact upon you because you know that you're sons and daughters of God and you don't allow for the culture to define you you find yourself showing up and becoming a game changer in the midst of the culture that when folks see you they know there's something distinct 
and different about you and say, I want to know what you own so I can become what you are doing. So despite all the craziness going on with the Corinthians, Paul opens this letter by thanking God for them. The reason Paul thanks God, even though he has to reprimand them later, is because what you see later is an improvement to what they were doing before. In other words, they were worse prior to the grace of God moving in their lives. So if they were acting carnal and crazy with Jesus, can you imagine how they were behaving before Jesus? <laughs> While they were not where Paul nor Jesus wanted them to be, they were better than they were before. All right. Can we be honest right now? Can I? It's just us. It's, it's just us. Many of us have to admit that this is our story. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 Look, look straight at me. Don't look to your right or your left. Look, look, look up here. Because most of us don't have it all together. If we're honest, there's some things that a lot of us do that are not so godly, not so Christian, not so spiritual. We got some struggles we're still confronting. We got some demons we're still fighting. We got some inhibitions we're still overcoming. We got some fleshly desires we're still trying to subdue. We got some words we're still trying not to use. We got some people we should not be calling texting, tweeting, Facebooking, DMing, or gramming, or hitting up on Snapchat. And you are saved, sanctified with your Christian self. Now, before some Pharisee, Judge, Judy, or Joe say something smart about this, if you can imagine what they were before Jesus, you ought to give God praise for where they are right now. Here's my problem. Here's my problem with, 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 with some, some church folk. Some. Not all, but some. Here, here, here it is. We don't give people the chance nor the grace to develop into the new creation. Here's how some of us church folks behave. We think the moment you walk down the aisle, that's why some folks don't like to walk down the aisle. The moment you walk down the aisle, you'll give the preacher your hand and the Lord your heart that the moment you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, that at that very moment, you stop all the wrongs, all the sin, all the mess that you used to do. How many of y'all know it doesn't work like that? I thought I would have had more claps than that. I thought everybody in the church would have been giving God a praise on that. Here it is. It, it, it doesn't work like that. It is not something instantaneous, even though God can do it instantaneously. Oftentimes, God does not do it instantaneously. And this is what we got to understand about people who come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That the change is not always automatic or instantaneous, but it takes time. All right. The reason that some of you all can't clap is because I believe some of y'all are some Judge Judas and Joes who think it's supposed to happen like that. But I'm here to let somebody know, if you think they go off now, you should have seen them before Jesus. They would cuss at the drop of a dime. Now they cuss at the drop of a dollar. They, they, they will lie at the drop of a dime. But at least now they lie at the drop of a C note. Uh, uh, they had sex with anyone who said the right thing. 
but they've at least cut back considerably. They ain't tithing now, but before Jesus, they weren't giving anything. So I have learned in 33 years of pastoring to give God praise for progress. You may not be where you should be, but you ought to thank God where you, you're not where you used to be. And I believe I'm talking to a few saints at St. Paul Church that when you look back over your life, you say, Pastor, you thanking God, I'm thanking God, I'm not where I used to be. Used to be ratchet, used to be wicked, used to be crazy, used to be sinful, used to be stuck on stupid, used to have gone cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. But do I have at least 55 of y'all in the house that ain't afraid to testify? He still looks beyond my faults. And he sees my needs. Beloved, this is the fundamental message that Paul is trying to convey to the church at Corinth and convey to us here at St. Paul. As a matter of fact, Paul is amazed, and I am too, at the grace of God being shown to the Corinthian church despite their divisions, immorality, marital problems, and lawsuits. Sound like churches in 2023. But the shout is how God called this group of people out of their immoral, indolent, and idolatrous ways to be the church. And guess what? In 2023, God is calling St. Paul out of our immoral, indolent, that's lazy, and idolatrous ways to become the church. And the reason that Paul did that with them back then and is doing it with us right now is because both of us have found ourselves getting caught up in the culture and worshiping the idols of this world. The gods of the culture who lack the power to free us from our mess, lift us from the murk and mire, and give us new life in Jesus Christ. The reason Paul preaches about Jesus, and I do too, is because Jesus is the only somebody who has the capacity, capability, and character to change our lives inside out and for the better. And just like the church at Corinth, we got our flaws and shortcomings, but hallelujah and thank you, Jesus, God is stood, still doing a great work in the church, through the church, with the church, and in spite of the church. Paul admits, Corinth, you all are not lacking in spiritual gifts. It is noted that the Corinthian church was probably the most gifted church in all of New Testament antiquity, and it was also the craziest. Just because you're gifted does not mean you do not have issues. Because the gifts come without repentance. Which basically means I could be gifted and still stuck. Help me preach this thing. I, 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 I have discovered that some of the most gifted folks are some of the craziest folks. And we let them operate in their craziness because they're gifted rather than calling them out for their craziness so that their character can match their gift. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. They might be gifted, but they're still dealing with issues of being guilty. And yet, to be in Christ, is to become part of a new reality because of Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection. It is because of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection that you and I now have the Holy Ghost inside of us. And it is this Holy Spirit, this Holy Ghost, that gives us gifts. That means, hear me well, each and every saved person, born-again person, redeemed person, you got at least one spiritual gift. In other words, whatever God wants you to do, 
God has gifted you to bring it to pass. Whatever purpose for your life, God has placed the gift inside of you. Whatever assignment you have for the sake of the kingdom, God has placed the gift inside of you. Whatever you're supposed to do, God has given you the ability within to bring it to pass. In other words, it's in you. It's, 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 it's in you, but it ain't going to come out of you until you get connected to the Jesus Christ who puts the Holy Ghost in you to birth the gift out of you. So there are some reasons implicitly derived from the text why God has given us these gifts of the Holy Spirit to be used, check this out, in the church so that God will be glorified. And what, why did God allow for the Holy Spirit to give them and us gifts as far as our reality is concerned. First of all, the Holy Spirit gives us gifts to verify our salvation. That's in verses 4 through 6. You will see how being saved is a very precious gift from God. However, we must understand that when we are saved, God gives us spiritual gifts because of the Holy Spirit. Your journey, my journey begins when we say yes to God through Jesus Christ being our Lord and Savior. Being Lord means he has the right to tell me how to live my life. Being Savior means he has saved me from my sins. So salvation is verified through my spiritual formation. So when God saves you and me, it's more than just giving us fire insurance from hell. You and I are saved so we can live our lives with a sense of purpose, power, and passion. Therefore, on this spiritual journey, we need to place within our spiritual suitcases these items. Prayer, praise, Bible study, personal devotion, faith in God, connection with God's people in communal worship. This is basic because God did not save you so you could just come to church and shout and sing and praise. God saved us from something so we can do something that brings him glory. In other words, God saves us so we can do the work of mission outside the church and ministry inside the church. And this is where too many of us miss the boat and miss the blessing because we only show up for church just to shout and sing, but we don't do nothing when we leave except criticize and critique. If I'm saved, then I'm expected to be in church and be in a ministry. If I'm saved, I'm expected to pray and read my Bible and have time with God and come to church and maintain my faith. If I'm saved, I'm expected to do something in the church and outside of the church. But if I'm saved and all I do is come to church and take, take, take and don't give to the church, then I'm out of balance. It's like driving a car. When a car is engaged, there is a shift in the gears that causes the car to either go forward or to go backwards. But when the car is in neutral, it's doing nothing but making a bunch of noise but ain't going nowhere. And I want to contend that's how a lot of church folks are in 2023. Uh, making a whole bunch of noise but ain't going nowhere because they're stuck in neutral. Uh, raising hell in neutral. Uh, uh, confusing in neutral. Criticizing in neutral. And I contend that we got a whole lot of folks uh, ain't moving forward but they're stuck in neutral neutral in forgiveness neutral in power neutral in mercy neutral in grace neutral in love neutral in mission neutral in ministry neutral in their works uh, mutual in their praise neutral in their worship uh, but I want you to understand uh, this major fundamental fact uh, you do not work to get saved, you work and serve because you are saved. I'm getting ready to do a church check right now. So therefore, if you ain't working, the problem might be, number one, you don't know what God expects from you. Or number two, 
you might not be saved. Number one, you might not know what God expects for you to do. Or number two, you just might not be saved. Our spiritual verification is more than just working for God. It is working with God. It is letting God work through us. And therefore, our spiritual gifts are a large part of what God wants to do through us. God has given us gifts to be used for God's glory. God has given us talents to be used for God's glory. God has given us skills to be used for God's glory. God has given us power to be used for God's glory. This is why we have to discern moments of service that God opens up for us. But it is a sign of of God's salvation in our life where we find our purpose and our personal course and find how we can run this race that God will have for us to run. This is because the gift, check this out, is not for you nor for me. It is to bring God glory. God did not tell the Holy Ghost to give us a gift so that our names can be in the light. God did not tell the Holy Ghost to give us a gift so we can go flossing on the gram or Facebook or Snapchat. God did not tell give us the gifts so we can go and build our brand. The spotlight ain't about you. It's about God. So when God shines the spotlight on us, you need to deflect that thing back to God. That means that whenever folks start calling your name, the first thing you ought to say is give God the glory because you need to understand your gift ain't to make you great it is to lift up the name of Jesus so somebody will come to the saving knowledge of who Jesus Christ is as their Lord and Savior this means that you and I should be thirsty for God training for ministry going through the test so we can be entrusted with this gift in other words if I am saved there ought to be some signs that I'm saved and those signs ought to be through my works uh, so that God will get the glory. Am I talking to anybody in the house right now that ain't afraid to admit uh, that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God loves you and that you are saved uh, and if you are saved uh, you ought to be doing something. May the works I've done uh, speak for me uh, and the reason that some of us are on mute right now is because we ain't doing nothing. But do I I have at least 121 folks in the house right now that ain't afraid to admit, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Uh, if you want me to evangelize and tell somebody about your goodness, I'll do it. If you want me to share your love, I'll do it. If you want me to do a mission, I'll do it. If you want me to do ministry, I'll do it. If you want me to usher, I'll do it. Uh, if you want me to sing, I'll do it. If you want me to preach, I'll do it. If you want me to teach, I'll do it. If you want me to love, I'll do it. If you want me to heal, I'll do it. If you want me to go visit the sick, I'll do it. If you want me to go check on those who are in prison, I'll do it. Whatever you need for me to do, Lord, I'll do it. Not for my name's sake, but for your name's sake. So you will get the glory, the honor, and the praise. May the work I've done. Speak for me. There ought to be some signs that you're saved. Somebody ought to be able to see something. Next, the Holy Spirit gives us gifts so that we can educate the culture, the world about Jesus. That's in verses 7 and 8. Um, these gifts are given to us for use in the church so that Christ will be edified to the culture and the world. To edify means to instruct, to inform, to cultivate. Therefore, God gives us these gifts so the world can see us operating in these gifts and want to know how we got these gifts. And when you tell them it ain't nobody but God through Jesus, they want to know Jesus. Because the church is known as the body of Jesus Christ. So when you think about the human body and the body of Jesus Christ, there's something wonderful about these bodies. Uh, the human body is the most awesome piece of work in all of creation. 
The body can heal itself, provide for itself, and protect itself. God has put everything in the body that it needs to be sufficient. All we got to do is feed it, water it, and care for it. Come here just for a moment. When it comes to the local body of Christ known as the church, through God's empowerment, the church is self-sustaining and self-containing. In other words, the church has everything we need to make a difference in the world and in the lives of others. Therefore, I know I'm getting ready to get in trouble. Therefore, we have everything we need in the house. Uh-huh. Yep, yep, yeah, yeah. We, we, cannot, we cannot depend upon the strategies of the world for growth and management. That's why we should not have fundraisers like the world does. Um, I, I, God knows I'm getting ready to get in trouble. God does not expect for the kingdom to be financed on fish plates and chicken dinners. Is this mic on? Is this mic on? Is this my, I am not scared. I ain't seen nowhere in scripture where it says, come together on a Saturday morning, get in the kitchen, fry up some chicken wings, chicken breasts, and thighs, and sell it for the sake of the kingdom. I do see in the Bible where it says, bring all your tithes and offerings to the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now, said Lord. I do see in the Bible where it says, give and it shall be given unto you good measure. Press down, shake it together, run it over. I ain't seen nowhere in the Bible where it says chicken dinner, fish plates, and chitlin bazaars. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Ah. Uh, Uh-huh, uh-huh. Listen, listen, listen. Nothing wrong with marketing strategies, but we don't, we don't need to rely solely on that. Because you want to know who the greatest marketers ought to be for the kingdom? You. Is this mic on? Every last one of us who have been saved and born again ought to be telling somebody about Jesus. That, that, that's why we ain't got to be using gimmicks for church growth. Ooh, it's getting quiet in here. We, 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 we don't have to do that. We ain't got to have lions and tigers and bears coming and dancing on stage. And God knows Listen, I, listen, I ain't trying to compare myself to no other preacher in the city, but I ain't wearing no jeans with holes in them and stiletto boots and all that stuff trying to get y'all to like me. I am who I am, and I still maintain the gospel still works. God does not even expect for us to use politics. To make church grow. Because we need Democrats and Republicans and Independents and Libertarians and Green Partiers. Listen, some of them may be confused in their politics, but if you know Jesus, Jesus is going to get all of us straight one day. I, I, I'm out there now. Let me, let me swim. God does not even expect for us to use programs. To make the church grow. You ain't got to have no usher program. No choir program. No deacon and trustee program. No. He, he does not look for us to make. Listen, God. That, I know I'm getting ready to get in trouble. God. Oh, I know I'm getting ready to get in trouble. God does not even want us to use singing to make the church grow. 
It ain't God's desire for us to use economic development or housing development to make the church grow. Because unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Here it is. The secret is not in worldly strategies, but in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Can I tell you all really what helps the church grow? The gospel still works. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. That's, that, I, I, I should have more folks clapping beside that. Let me say that one more time for the folks in the back. The gospel still works. All right. See, see, if, if, if you don't believe me, if you don't believe me, go back to the day of Pentecost. On that day, the Holy Ghost gifted those 120 men and women and men in the upper room to speak in tongues. The tongues they spoke were languages from all over the diaspora that allowed for the gospel to be shared to those that were listening. Peter stood up and was so gifted with a sermon that he preached that was so convicting and convincing and compelling until 3,000 folks joined the church on one day. And his sermon was not how to be a better spouse, how to be a better parent, how to be a better child, how to get more money, how to get more honey, how to have a better job, or how to have a more positive self-identity. His message was simply this. He said that God is going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Young men shall see vision. Old men shall dream dreams. Signs and wonders will fill the earth and the heaven. The moon will become like blood. And whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall shall be saved. Then Peter got up and started preaching about that Negro from Nazareth by the name of Jesus Christ. He talked about how Jesus worked miracles, how Jesus was crucified, dead, and buried, and then God raised this Jesus from the dead on the third day, and it was so compelling, so convicting. After hearing this, the crowd said, what must we do to be saved? Jesus said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remissions of your sin, and you shall receive Oh, I feel like preaching a gift of the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says that 3,000 folks joined the church on that Sunday. And the church grew. They didn't have social media, but they had the gospel. They didn't have TV, but they had the gospel. They didn't have YouTube, but they had the gospel. They did not have worldly schemes, but they had the gospel. They had the power to turn the world upside down for Jesus. And I'm still here to let somebody know that when the world sees you want Jesus, and see you talk Jesus and see you live Jesus we could turn this sucker out we could turn the world upside down for Jesus because when we preach Jesus believers will know there's a bright side somewhere when we preach Jesus believers will know that this corruption must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality when we preach Jesus believers will know that when Jesus comes back we shall be like him when we preach Jesus believers will know that we're going to get a crown of righteousness for the hell we caught down here. When we preach Jesus, we will have the power to overcome the troubles of this world. When we preach Jesus, nothing and nobody shall separate us from the love of God. I'm here to let somebody know the gospel still work. The gospel still has power to make a difference in somebody's life. So I'm not here to preach a motivational speech. Other folks can do that. I'm not here to preach just about positive self-outcome. Other folks can do that. Can I tell y'all when I'm a preach? I'm a preach about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ because when God raised Jesus from the dead, that secured everything that you and I have and the devil can throw everything at us including the kitchen sink but because Jesus got up from the dead and because Jesus is alive, you and I got the power, the capacity, and the capability to overcome any and everything that the devil throws at us including the kitchen sink. Do I have 
many saved, sanctified folks in the house that know the gospel still works. There's power in the gospel. There's healing in the gospel. There's deliverance in the gospel. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everybody that believes. Do I have any believing gospel folks in the house that will testify? I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. No, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I got to give you one more thing. I'm done. Uh, somebody said that's enough. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, now I got to give y'all this. Uh, uh, the Holy Ghost gives us gifts, check this out, so that our God will be glorified. Mm -hmm. That's in verse 9. That when the Spirit gifts you and me, it's so that God, not you, not me, will get the glory. Whatever gifts you have, your source is not your education. Your source is not your connections with people. Your source is none other than God. So our gifts or to glorify our God. Just because something is spiritual or something is done in the name of Jesus doesn't make it right. Uh-huh, I lost half of y'all. And I want to contend, I want to contend that I'm standing on good biblical ground. Because Jesus said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he or she who does the will of my Father in heaven. Because folks are going to say, Lord, didn't we cast out demons in your name? Didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we do many works and wonders in your name? And Jesus is going to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I don't know who you are. You can do things in the name of Jesus and not be connected to Jesus and still miss the boat. This is why, this is why, this is why I preach doctrine and teaching to help you to understand why you do what you do. Because if you have a zeal but not according to knowledge, you're going to be like a bull in a china shop tearing up everything. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. If our gifts are used the way the Lord wants them to be used, it's going to bring him glory. Let me close the Bible. When, when, when you do what the Lord tells you to do and you use your gifts, you ought to make the right confession. What's that confession? In other words, when folks are being blessed, you need to tell them, give God the glory. That when folks are being saved, you need to tell them, give God the glory. There's only one kingdom that is being built. It's not mine. It's not yours. It's the kingdom of God. And when you and I have Jesus at the center, then everything else is going to fall in place. I'm getting ready to sit down and take my seat, but here's my shout. God gets the glory. And can I tell you why God gets the glory? God gets the glory because God is more than faithful. I know I got some witnesses right now. Yeah. Yeah, God is more than faithful. And because God is more than faithful, you and I can sing like the songwriter said, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. 
all that I needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, unto me. In other words, St. Paul, when you and I understand that all of this comes from nobody but God, you have no problem giving God glory, honor, and praise because you realize that your salvation came from God and you realize that your sanctification comes from God and you realize that one day glorification comes from God and you realize that nobody will be able to charge you with judgment because God has saved you from the guttermost to the utmost and when you know when you know who God is in the pardon of your sins you don't mind showing God some signs by doing the work that God has assigned your hands I'm closing y'all may the Lord bless you real good but I'm like Paul because God is more than faithful. And do I have anybody in the house that ain't afraid to testify that God is more than faithful? Because has he been faithful in your life? Has God made a way out of no way in your life? Has God brought you through many dangers, toils, and snares in your life? Has God delivered you from trouble in your life? Has God lifted up a bowed down head in your life? Has God continued to make ways out of no ways in your life? Well, if you know the Lord has done all of that, you are not have any problem glorifying and magnifying his name because the God I serve is more than faithful and if God is faithful you ought to give him a faithful praise that if God is glorious you ought to give him a glorious praise if God is magnificent you ought to give him a magnificent praise if God is upright you ought to give him an upright praise because when I look back over my life I have to admit I would not be where I am uh, had it not been for the Lord on my side. Uh, good morning, St. Paul. Uh, may the Lord bless you real good. Uh, but I'm determined more than ever to live the way Jesus would have for me to live. Uh, because Paul said in Philippians 1 and 6, uh, being confident in this very thing, uh, he that beginneth a good work in me uh, shall bring it to pass in Jesus Christ. Uh, is there anybody in the house that ain't afraid to testify uh, that aren't you glad God ain't through with you yet uh, he's still working on you uh, he's still delivering you uh, he's still making you better uh, so you need to go ahead and give God praise uh, cause you may not be where you should be uh, but when you look back over your life uh, you got to give God praise uh, cause you're not where you used to be uh, I'll see you later May the Lord bless you real good. But can I go back to Simba the lion? Because when Simba went to that pool and Rafika touched the water, Simba saw the reflection of his daddy Mufasa down in the water. Well, St. Paul, on this third Sunday, we had the opportunity to baptize three folks. And when they went into the pool, they went down as their old self uh, but when they went back in the water uh, they were being buried with Jesus uh, but when they came up out of the water uh, they were resurrected with Jesus uh, I'm here to let you know uh, that something happens at baptism uh, that when you go down into the water uh, you go down as a dry devil uh, but you're buried with Jesus uh, and you come out living for him uh, do I have anybody in the house uh, they ain't afraid to testify uh, something happened in that water uh, and it wasn't the 
water that saved you. Uh, it wasn't the water that cleansed you, uh, but the Holy Ghost met you uh, down in that water. Uh, and when you came up out of the water uh, and you were serious about God, uh, you couldn't help but give God praise. Uh, it's just like Rafika and Simba, uh, that when you looked into the water uh, and the Holy Ghost stirred up the water, uh, you saw the reflection uh, of Jesus Christ uh, as your Lord and Savior. Uh, good morning, y'all. Uh, may the Lord bless you real good, uh, but I'm here to let somebody know uh, whatever God has for you to do, uh, just point to yourself uh, and say, it's in me. It's in me. It's in me. Salvation is in you. Prosperity is in you. Deliverance is in you. You. Uh, healing is in you. Uh, deliverance is in you. Uh, joy is in you. Uh, power is in you. Uh, mercy is in you. Uh, grace is in you. Uh, healing is in you. Uh, deliverance is in you. Uh, power is in you. Uh, is there anybody here? They ain't afraid to give God praise because whatever you need, God's already put it in you. I'm here to let somebody know the gift is in you. The passion is in you. The purpose is in you. The fire is in you. The grace is in you. The anointing is in you. And when you know it's in you, you ought to give God praise because what is in you will come out of you. Uh, do I have any saved folks uh, that know there's a praise uh, in your lips uh, that know there's a praise uh, on your spirit uh, that know there's a praise uh, in your mind uh, that know there's a praise uh, in your heart uh, and if you're not too ashamed uh, or you're not too afraid uh, I double dog dare you uh, in the house right now uh, to go ahead uh, and let that thing out uh, because when I think uh, about the goodness of Jesus uh, and all he's done for me uh, my soul uh, cries out uh, hallelujah oh shucks uh, I don't preach myself happy uh, but is there anybody here uh, that know I feel uh, and feel the same way I feel uh, if you're not too scared uh, lift up your hands uh, throw back your head uh, open up your mouth uh, and give God a praise cause that thing's in you. You gotta let it out. 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 Tell your neighbor, scoot over some cause when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. I'm glad the Lord set me free say yes say yes say yes say yes say yes you may not be able to stand on your feet but if you can't stand tap your feet if you can't tap your feet shrug your shoulders if you can't shrug your shoulders blink your eyes if you can't blink your eyes nod your head if you can't nod your head wave your hand cause if I couldn't say a word I'll just wave my hand say yes say yes say yes can I holler one more time yes yes to give God the very best praise that you have right now. Come on, come on, come on. That thing's in you. You gotta let it out. Ah. Uh.
If you're going to play it, don't play with it. Come on now. Deacons come, deacons come, deacons come, deacons come, deacons come. I want to, I want to offer you the greatest gift that God can give, and that's the gift of salvation. online or in the house greatest gift that God can give us is the gift of salvation and we come and I want to lead you in a prayer for that gift because when you get that gift all the other gifts follow but the first gift you got to acknowledge is the gift of salvation let you know that and I want you to hear me and hear me well salvation or being saved is a personal but not a private decision your walk with Christ ain't never meant to be it's not meant to be private it's public that's why you walk down the aisle. That's why you acknowledge Jesus Christ before others. So we can do life together. God never meant for your relationship with God to be private. It's personal and it's public. That's what God desires because he wants us to be in community and relationship with each other. So I want you to make a public decision to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. He said, if you're ashamed to own me before men and women, I'd be ashamed to own you and know you before my Father. It's public. Don't be trying to be like Nicodemus and come at night. It's public. So we're going to all do this prayer together because for those, that, for those of us that made that commitment, it's a reminder of that public commitment. But if you're here right now, you're watching me online and you want to make that decision, I want you to follow my instructions and move because the Spirit is moving on you. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. Repeat after me, God, I thank you for the opportunity to claim the gift of salvation. I believe you sent Jesus to die for my sins. I believe he died on a cross and three days later you raised him from the dead. I believe one day he's coming back. But until then, send your Holy Spirit into my life. Forgive me of all my sins. Help me be the person you want me to be. In the name of Jesus, I pray this prayer. Amen. Keep those heads bowed just for a moment. I don't care whether you are introvert, extrovert, or ambivert. I don't care what your personality is. You need to do this right now. If that prayer was meant for you or you're in the house, you want a relationship with Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're not sure where you stand with God. If you meant that prayer in your head and your heart, salvation is yours. And God, God wants to do a new work, a new thing in your reality. If that's you, you're in the house. 
you want a relationship with God right now, do me this favor and do God the wonderful pleasure. Put up your hand. If that's you, put up your hand. If that prayer was meant for you, put up your hand. Put up your hand. Put up your hand. Would you hold up your hand? Would you hold up your hand? I want you to hear me and hear me well. If you got your hand up, would you come on down? I want to give you some information. I want to let you know what it means to be in relationship with God as your Lord and Savior, to have the gifts of the Spirit moving in your life. If you got your hand up, would you come ahead and come on down right now? You got your hand up, come on down. If you have your hand up, stand up, stand up. Get your, if you got your hand up, stand up, stand up, come down. Stand up, come down. Stand up, come down. God bless you. We see one that is coming. Will there be another? Will there be another? Will there be another? God bless you. Walk them all the way down. Walk them all the way down. Come on, St. Paul, let's celebrate those that are coming. 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 We could do a whole lot better than that. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's celebrate those that are coming. Will there be another? Will there be another? Will there be another? If you're watching us on Facebook, on our church website, and that prayer was meant for you, I want you to type in salvation in the chat. One of our digital ministers is going to reach out to you and let you know what the next steps are. If you're listening to us on YouTube or on the telephone, email us at connect to spbcnc.org or call us at 704-334-5309. Leave your name and a good number and by 5 o'clock tomorrow, somebody's going to reach out to you and let you know what the next steps are. We celebrate those who have taken the risk to come down and to understand what it means to have a relationship with God. Let's give God praise for them. Here's my second call. Here's my second call. You may be in the house right now. You may be saying, Pastor, I'm already saved. I know who Jesus Christ is. I've been baptized, but you have not been connected to a church for a long, long time. Or you may be coming back home, back to St. Paul. You want to reunite, recommit to St. Paul. I want you to hear me and hear me now. If that's you, and you're trying to, you want to reconnect or you want to connect with St. Paul, I would love to be your pastor. These men and women would love to be your brothers and sisters in Christ. So if that's you, you're in the house right now. If that's you, you're looking for a church home. Let's do life together. If I'm talking to you, would you hold up your hand right now? Would you hold up your hand? Would you hold up your hand? You're looking for a church home, looking for a place to belong, to connect. Is that you? Would you hold up your hand? Hold up your hand. Hold up your hand. If you got your hand up, if I can be your pastor, if you would love to do life with us, would you go ahead and come on down right now, wherever you are, wherever you are, would you go ahead and come on down right now? I see somebody that's, someone that's coming, someone that's coming. Come on, God bless you. Come on, let's give God praise. St. Paul, come on, let's celebrate. Let's give God praise. Will there be another? Will there be another? St. Paul, we could do a whole lot better than that. We could do a whole lot better than that. Come on, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Will there be another? Will there be another? Will there be another? If you're watching us online and you want to unite with us based on your Christian experience or you want to connect with us through watch care. Watch care means you're not going to be in the area for a long time. You're just here temporarily and you just want to be connected. We would love to have you. Do me this favor on Facebook or on the website. Type in connect. One of our digital ministers is going to reach out to you let you know what the next steps are. If you're listening to us on YouTube or the telephone, email us at connect at spbcnc.org or call us at 704-334-5309, leave your name and your number. Someone's going to reach out to you by 5 o'clock tomorrow. Yes, I know the office is closed, but we check our phones. By tomorrow, by 5 o'clock, to see who you are, and they will touch base with you. Amen. I'm going to ask those that have taken the risk to come on down. If y'all would just face me, I would normally do handshakes and all that stuff, but I'm going to do fist bumps right now. God bless you. God bless you. Hey, bruh. Amen. All right. All right. All right. And God bless you, my sister. I want you to do me a favor. Follow these lovely people. They're going to take you to the back, ascertain what it is that you need. St. Paul, can we celebrate those who have come? Come on. We could do a whole lot better than that. Let's stand. 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 Just want to remind you, 6 o'clock this evening at the Park Ministries on Bates Ford Road, Bishop Claude Alexander is the pastor. United Missionary Baptist, Fellow, Baptist Association is having our MLK celebration. And we invite you to come in person or check us out online um, as far as that's concerned. Um, and the preacher is Reverend Kathy, Kathy Jones of Park Institutional CME Church. So we invite you to come out and to share. 
all heads bowed all eyes closed God we thank you for the eyes have seen our ears have heard for the gifts you have placed within us now God as we leave this place and this space but never your presence nor power keep us in your sovereign care and then this week bring us back together for witness work worship or word where we can do what you will have for us to do and you get the glory and the honor and now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with all extreme joy to only wise God our Father our Savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forevermore may we sing together our doxology praise God from whom all blessings flow those hands strong blessed week in the Lord.